When we take the integral, we are finding the area beneath the curve. So for example, here's some function f of x in green. And if I wanted to take the integral from a to b of f of x, what I am actually doing is finding the area beneath f of x and above the x-axis. So all of this area in here between a and b, that is what I am calculating when I take the integral. Now before we actually learn how to find an integral, let's first approximate the area under the curve. In the 19th century, a mathematician by the name of Georg Riemann did just that. He figured out a method to f approximate the area beneath the curve, and this is called the Riemann approximation method. What he did is he said, hey, check this out. We can make a rectangle from A on over, and we'll call this some um, distance x. We can use the exact same distance x to make yet another rectangle from the curve. We can use the exact same distance x to make another rectangle, and another rectangle, and another one, and another one. And finally, here's our last rectangle right here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here we have broken up the region from A to B into seven different partitions. We call these partitions, and really partition just means a new rectangle. So we have seven different rectangles or seven partitions. And we're going from A to B. Now when we use a Riemann approximation method, like an LRAM, the left Riemann, or an RRAM, a right Riemann, or the MRAM, and the mid Riemann, it's important that the distance between each of my x values that are defining the sides of these rectangles be uniform, meaning that we have the same width of our rectangles. This is usually a very good thing to do. So let's talk about notation for just a second. Let's call the width of our rectangles h. Well, you'll notice that as I made these rectangles, I was having them go all the way up to the function value as I was doing them from the left-hand side of the rectangle. So the left-hand part of the rectangle went up to the function and over. And the left-hand side went up to the function and over. Up to the function over. So you'll notice that there are places like right in here where my rectangles are above the curve or right down here where my rectangle is below the curve. That's because I just used a left Riemann approximation. Here is a clearer version of the left Riemann approximation using y equals x cubed. Notice that the first rectangle has a height of zero. The second rectangle goes up to the function value at 0.5 and then over. The third one goes up to the function value at 1, and then over, and then from 1.5 up to the function, and over. And so we're using the left-hand side of these rectangles to go up to the function. That defines uh, the height of my rectangles. Likewise, a right Riemann approximation would go from the right-hand side of the rectangle, and then over to the left. So here's a right-hand approximation. And of course, a mid Riemann approximation goes right in the middle of the rectangle and spreads out in either direction. Now, let's figure out a good notation for this approximation method. Our width of our rectangles is h. Let's call the first x value, our a, x sub 1. We'll call the next x value over x sub 2. So already we know that h is defined as x sub 2 minus x sub 1 because it's the distance between them. Here's our third x value, x sub 3, x sub 4, 5, 6, 7, and here we go all the way up through x sub 8. Now really it depends on how many partitions you have. Here we have seven partitions and therefore we have 7 plus 1 different x values. Here we have 7 partitions, 
but you could have as many partitions as you want. You could have a hundred partitions, fifty, you could even have as little as one or two partitions. That's not very accurate, but you could do that. So here we have seven partitions and the width of each of my partitions we called H. Now what is the height of each of these rectangles? Well you'll notice that the height went all the way up to the function value and then over on the left hand side of each rectangle. So what we can do is we can break up these rectangles like here's rectangle one, here's rectangle two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now you don't have to do this, but just to give you a sense of where we are as we're doing these sums, they'll make things a lot easier. So since we are finding the area of rectangles, well, how do you find the area of a rectangle? Simple. Base times the height. Well, our base is uniform. It's the same all the way through. The base of rectangle 1 is h. And the height of rectangle 1 is the function value on the left hand side of that rectangle and on the left hand side we used x sub 1 so this right here is f of x sub 1 so the area of the first rectangle is f of x sub 1 times h plus the second one the left hand side is x sub 2 so we have f of x sub 2 times h plus here's f of x sub 3 times h and we do this all the way up through our last rectangle which this right here is x sub 7 so here we're going to do f dot 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 plus we go all the way up through f of x sub 7 times h. Now the dot 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 just means that you know 4, 5, 6 they're all in here as well but to save time and room let's write it this way. Now this is how we find the Riemann approximation. That's it. We're done. Really cool thing though is that we could factor out an h right now because each of these different h's is the same. And you can only do this, you can only factor it out if you have the same h all the way through. Luckily, when we do a Riemann sum, our h tends to be the same all the way through. So, we could factor out an h, and we're left with f of x sub 1 plus f of x sub 2 plus f of x sub 3 plus all the way up through f of x sub 7. Now at this point you will notice that we did not use x sub 8 in our formula. And the reason for this is we're using a left Riemann approximation in this particular example. We're using the left hand side of each of these rectangles. x sub 8 falls on the right hand side of these rectangles. So we didn't use it. However, just as a future reference, whenever doing Riemann approximations, let's say here is our first x value, second one, third one, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and finally eighth. When you're doing the left Riemann approximation, you use one through seven. If you use the right Riemann approximation, you use 2 through 8. So you can think of this as uh, n minus 1, or the amount of approximations that you, the amount of partitions that you have. Here we had 7 partitions, and we have 8 x values. So imagine the number of partitions, 7, as being your span, and if you have it on the left, it shifts over 1 to the left, so 1 through 7. And if it's a right Riemann approximation, that whole partition shifts over to the right one, so 2 through 8. And so you can think of it really nicely in that way if you ever get confused.